Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video. Welcome back to Masahana World, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of my hunting horn builds. Now, I'm currently working on two different hunting horn builds. This is the first one, and this is the more aggressive one. This one is a little bit more adequate if you want to do solo play instead of just support. However, it still brings some pretty strong buffs to your team if you happen to be playing with friends. I mean, it's a hunting horn at the end of the day but i just wanted to let you guys know that i'm also working on a more support oriented build which is going to probably include mushroom mancer wide range as well as the buffs of the hunting horn but i still need to grind quite a couple of parts before i get to that having said that let's get this party started this right here is base to face and this build is actually really good if you want to put a hammer on it as well. Which means I'll probably pick a hammer at some point and create a build called Mace to Face. But for now, let's focus on Base to Face. What is the Hunting Horn? As per usual, we're going to be starting uh, with the weapon that I'm going to be using. And on this particular case, I'm going to be using the Gamma Horn 2. Now, there's multiple reasons why I chose this one. Uh, for starters, it's got decent attack. It's not the best attack, but it's got decent attack. It's also got two uh, level 2 decoration slots, which are pretty useful if you really want to complement the build. You can use different hunting horns in this build, but you're probably going to be missing out on some of the skills that I actually use on here, which is fine if that is your choice, so long as you are aware of the stuff that you're missing out on. It's also got blast, so every now and then you're going to get a little bit of additional bonus in the form of a blast proc pretty damn good it's got neutral affinity as you guys know i usually don't like to go for negative affinity weapons even though i know they're pretty damn powerful it's just my personal play style anyway uh, moving on the other reason i really like this weapon is the buffs that you have on here naturally you have your self-improvement like you have with every other weapon but this particular weapon also has attack up l and wind pressure negated and defense up l now health boost doesn't really come into play as much because usually everybody should have a max potion or something but just in case you happen to be playing with randoms that for some reason don't have their health maxed out you can also use that as well personally i just like to play all of the songs while i'm playing with the weapon but health boost in my opinion not the most useful thing for this particular one because i always carry max potions to max myself out in case i'm going for a specific buff and didn't get it from the food okay Moving onwards, uh, what's the first piece of armor we got? The Dragon King Eye Patch Alpha. This should really come as no surprise because Dragon King Eye Patch is pretty damn good. You got your weakness exploit right there. It's one of the best armor pieces to get that sweet weakness exploit. So it's pretty much a no brainer, Dragon King Eye Patch. Next up, we have the Diablos Male Beta. Now, naturally, the reason we're getting this one is because we're going to be getting Slugger. This gives you level 2 Slugger, which is pretty damn good. I want to max out Slugger in this particular build, so the Diablos Male Beta is a very nice starting point. Then we have the Valhazak Braces Beta. Now, you guys might be thinking, peak performance? What's the deal with that? And the main reason why I'm getting these gloves right here is because I want the three level 1 decoration slots more so than the peak performance. Even though Big performance is just a nice little bonus I'm getting out of the equation, but the most important thing for me is the slots in the gloves. You guys will see why those will come into play. Nergigante Coil Beta, naturally, we want to get some attack boost in the build, and Nergigante Coil is one of the best uh, waste pieces for the attack boost that it provides. It also comes with a level 2 uh, decoration slot, which is pretty damn good. Then we got the Dober Greaves beta to get that second uh, attack boost on there. This is going to raise our attack boost up to level 4, so that we get the, um, the affinity benefits from it as well. And finally, we have the Attack Charm 3, which is going to basically max out our attack boost. Now, when it comes to decorations, on the Dober Greaves beta, we have the Sonorous Gem, which for those of you that do not know, this basically extends extends the melody effect duration and increases health recovery if your melodies happen to also do health recovery which is it's pretty much a must-have uh decoration in my opinion if you're playing a hunting horn since it's the one decoration that actually does anything for the hunting horn specifically then on the nergigante coil beta we have a destroyer jewel too because i am going to be going for part breaker as well i'm really greedy in this particular build and i get a lot of stuff that i want to dish out damage with it um then on the valhazak braces beta we got 
three Drain Jewels. This is going to give us Stamina Thief, which is essentially going to increase our chances to exhaust the monster. Actually, it's going to increase the power of our exhaust attacks, which this particular weapon actually does exhaust attacks, unlike my previous Archangel build. I know you guys, I fucked up, I'm sorry. Uh, and then on the Diablos Mail beta, we got the KO Jewel 2 to fill out our Slugger. And then on Dragon, Dragon King Eye Patch Alpha, we got the Tenderizer Jewel 2 to fill out our Weakness Exploit. And then finally on the Gamma Horn itself, we have two more Destroyer Jewels to max out Park Breaker. Like I said, you can use a different weapon if you want to, but you're probably going to be missing out on some of these slots, which is fine. If you're okay with losing Park Breaker, you can use whatever hunting horn you want to because the rest of the skills on this set also work really well at which point i would advise you to maybe replace the destroyer jewel for a sharp jewel or something else that you can actually take advantage of because i think that one piece of park breaker is not going to be that great so basically if you replace the hunting horn then you should probably replace this jewel with something else that helps you further your cause and finally, once you look at the finalized build, we have attack boost level seven. Hey, I said, this is an aggressive hunting horn build, okay? This is not the support build. It also grants you support, but it is there to smash monster face. It is base to face, okay? And then we got level three weakness exploit to get that 50% affinity whenever you are hitting weak parts, which with this weapon, you should try to hit the head as often as possible because you also got your part breaker, which is gonna increase the part damage on monsters by 30%. You're gonna be breaking stuff left and right. Then on top of that, you got slugger. So you're going to be uh, increasing the amount of stun damage that you're doing. So therefore hitting monsters in the head is going to be ideal, particularly with the shock waves that you got going as well. It's only going to increase all of those effects. Then on top of it, you put stamina thief for maximum drainage. It's pretty damn good. Monster is gonna be tired. If the monster is tired, you can go up to his face and just completely sing him the song of your people while smashing his face upside down. And then you got some peak performance in there, which like I said, is just a little bonus that comes from the Val Hazak Braces beta. And then on top of that, you got Horn Maestro to increase the durations of your buffs. Now with this particular weapon, I also took the liberty to go ahead and augment it because I, like I said, I really do like the buffs that I have on, the, um, on this particular hunting horn. And therefore, I augmented it with health regen and attack increase. Now, the point of the health regen is to actually uh, not have to um, heal myself as often. It is not particularly effective with the hunting horn, in my opinion. Sure, it will keep you topped up here and there, but in a lot of situations, you will still have to actually drink potions, particularly if you're going after tempered monsters because they deal a crap ton of damage. And then I also uh, upgraded with attack increase. Like I said, I like this weapon. Uh, this is going to be my main hunting horn most likely and therefore I wanted to make sure that I dealt as much damage as possible so that I could go ahead and take on a couple of beasties. Now I'm not a hunting horn main by any stretch, uh, but I really like this build and I feel that this build is particularly effective if you are starting out with hunting horn. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.